Hi friends, it's been a minute, so I just wanted to say hello. I hope everything is going wonderful. I've got a new project today based on the American artist, Edward Hopper. Um, we are going to do a lighthouse watercolor painting in his style, um, at least inspired by his work, not necessarily in his style, but he is one of the great American artists that you should know about. He is known for this painting on this cover. Look at this giant book I got at the library. So this painting is called Nighthawks and you might have seen it. It's very famous and it's been in a lot of like movies and shows. They've just talked about it and things like that. So um, he's one of my favorite artists and he's a painter and um, he's not alive anymore, but got all of this, this whole book, tons and tons of information. I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite um, paintings by him but I thought he would be a really great option for you guys to learn about both the artist and then also inspiration with the lighthouses obviously Maine is full of lighthouses and so that's why I wanted to cover that today um, and give you guys just some inspiration to you know be inspired by the things around you and the things you see um, that's what all artists do we just look around and we see what's interesting to us so as you're driving, as you're like exploring a new place, you might be like, oh my gosh, they have so many whatevers here. I mean, obviously if you're like in the redwoods, you're like, oh, they have so many trees. Well, if you're in Maine, you're obviously gonna notice they have so many lighthouses. And so that's something that you might find inspiration from. Um, you guys could take pictures of your favorite lighthouses. You could also find reference images online. You know, I'm a big fan of reference images, something to look at that you can be inspired by as you're working. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of watercolor today and then hopefully that'll be enough to get you guys started on your own. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see what you guys create. So I'm gonna pause this video and I'm gonna show you some of his examples of his work. Okay, so this is Nighthawks from 1942. It's oil painting. It is at the Art Institute of Chicago. And it's just one of the most iconic, famous paintings. Um, and this is like a detail up close. You can kind of see all of the detail that was put into that. And it's just, it's iconic. It's something that tells a story of America. And so it's always had a big reputation for being special. Um, anyway, you should just know it exists and know the name of it. It's Nighthawks. And yeah, that's, that's kind of all I wanted to show you. Let's get to the art. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you some of his work. I don't know if it's actually like totally illegal to show you all of these images without um, like authorization. But if you were here, we would be at the library. We would be looking at these things together. I would bring this artwork in for you guys to see this book and I would like show it to you. So I'm not gonna feel too guilty about this. Um, there's a little bit about his early years in life. Um, in a career of 60 years, oh, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. In a career of 60 years, Edward Hopper created a series of unforgettable images of modern America. So there's so much we can learn about him. Um, he studied in Europe and there's just all these beautiful little like hand sketches in here um, from France. Just like lots of cool things. A lot of paintings of boats and trains, just things that were, you know, modern in the 1920s and the early 1900s. So he was known for some prints. And so there's a lot of examples of his work in here. Um, this one is a building in the southwest and i think it's from 1925. I'm trying to get to the ones in maine okay so this one this one says adam's house but you see these boats and these sketches and i'm going to show you a little bit up close see if it'll focus you can see all of like the sketches so like in here it's very like rough sketch rough sketch that so you do have the charcoal um or a pencil so this one says it's done with pencil but this is kind of like what you guys are probably seeing a lot of where you are right now. And these are these um, houses that have these upper decks and then these, so this is watercolor. We're not gonna do anything this crazy cause like that is pretty intense. But I would love to see if you guys are doing little sketches of areas you go to, you know, cemeteries are really interesting. I just found out people leave recipes on their gravestones. I thought that was so interesting. Okay, anyway, back to lighthouses. So this is one of the lighthouses I really like. So lighthouse and building, Portland Head, uh, Maine watercolors from 1927 here's another one so this one is more of the emphasis of the house but then you have the lighthouse behind them let's see if i can show you guys this you see it so captain upton's house 1927 
This one is, um, oh, it's actually even bigger than this. So this one is a light at two lights from 1927. It's a watercolor. So it's even bigger, you can see it. So we had a whole series of these lighthouses. So this one is called Light at Two Lights and from 1927 as well. Again, I don't know if you can see like the detail of the sketching. So if you just wanna do a sketch today, that would be okay too. But I would prefer you guys to try to do a watercolor. Maybe go back over with colored pencils. This is a Lighthouse Hill, 1927. This um, one is actually in Dallas. The other ones I've showed you, one is at the Whitney Museum in New York. I don't know if you guys saw any artwork in New York, but it's kind of cool to see artists that you might've seen before. So this is Cape Elizabeth from 1929. This is the lighthouse at two lights uh, in 1929. It's an oil painting. So this is oil painting on canvas. So this is so interesting. Um, Portrait of America, practically all of Hopper's mature Work was based on contemporary United States, the physical face of America. His attitude towards the native scene was complex. In his early years, he said after um, he said to me that after France, the United States seemed a chaos of ugliness. So it's kind of funny, like he went to study in France and Europe, and then when he got back, he was like, it's kind of gross here. It says it took him a full 10 years to get over Europe, but I think he found the beauty in uh, the United States, definitely in Maine and in those houses. So there's just some really cool illustrations in here let me see if i can print some more pages um but yeah i just wanted to show you guys this book because i think it has so many cool things in it okay for this part i'm gonna do it where you guys can hear me and listen to me as i work um we're just gonna do a really quick basic outline of the things we want to include in our picture and i'm just gonna use a plain piece of uh, watercolor paper and a light colored Prismacolor. This is like a gray color, French gray. And I'm just gonna use that color so that I can see the really basic outlines of it, but without having too much other stuff show up because I don't want it to show up when I actually use my watercolor. So I'm looking at a picture, but the first thing I noticed are the cliffs. And I know that I've seen some photos you guys have posted. There's a lot of like really cool cliffs. And so I wanna include that. And I want that to be part of my picture too. And the water looks beautiful, so I'm gonna include some of that. But this is gonna kind of be like the land formation of the cliffs. And then down here is kind of like rocky and there's a beach. But as far as my lighthouse goes, it's going to be, I'm gonna do a super simple sketch of my tower. The other thing to consider is if you want your lighthouse to be tall, like I found a photo that is wide, but if you're there in real time and you can take your own picture, I would suggest doing it tall. That way you can really exaggerate how much the lighthouse is um, taking up space on your picture and it's going to kind of give that effect of like no this lighthouse is really big so get this next side done and it's probably really hard to see on the video that's okay the whole point is for you guys to draw it super light so i just pick a light gray color that's going to be the best way to accomplish that and then i'm going to put some marks on there for myself remember i'm not doing a lot of detail it's just a super super basic outline so that i can kind of have what i want um, for me so when i do the watercolor you won't really see any of this but you can see it for yourself as you're like sketching it so on the curves of the lighthouse, once you get past the midway point, the curves are gonna go up on like the things, like if that makes sense, the, the towers and like the decks and stuff. Like down here, they'll be low and then up here, they'll go uh, curved upwards. I'll try to show you more what I mean by that when we get further into it. But that's the next part. Okay, that's done. And then I have this little curve right here because then behind it, it drops down away from us. And it kind of has to play into that perspective stuff, which we learned about last time. So I'm gonna go up again, up again, breaking it into each section, the things that I see. So this part, it's a little bit curved this way. And then it's gonna go up to a point. And then it's got pretty much this like little ball at the top with a little antenna. And then that's like the lighthouse part of it. So you can see it, it's just super light. And then I'm going to add the house. So the lighthouse is obviously the tower, but oftentimes they have the house next to them, which is where people would like live and work uh, in the towers, in the lighthouse tower. They would like be able to have a community beneath them or like their family could live down there, things like that. Some of the super remote ones obviously didn't have that, but that's kind of the cool thing about all these lighthouses is each little structure is different. And the only thing that's consistent is this tower, this bright lighthouse tower. So the other thing I was thinking about that, I wanted to do watercolor with you guys. And the reason I was thinking that would be cool is because you can go down to the water and get seawater for your watercolor. So like I'm using Phoenix tap water. It's not the color of it. There's a leftover watercolor paint, acrylic paint in there, but 
yours would be like seawater and it'll do a really cool thing where it will leave the texture of the salt onto your picture and I thought that was like really cool and so um, I've done watercolor paintings with kiddos where we've used salt water and I was like you guys have the actual ocean right there so you should definitely use that and include that in your picture okay so you can kind of see I don't really want to spend too much time with this um, I kind of want to just get the structure down for you guys to do it I just wanted to kind of talk to you while I did it so now you should be able to start outlining whatever uh, lighthouse you found or want to use for your example like I literally just googled one obviously if you can take a real picture in real time that would be better that's going to be even more special because it's like somewhere you've actually been to um, but for me I'm not there so I'm just going to do what I can find online and I'll update you with this when it's done and then we'll start adding in the colors Okay, so we are back to the actual watercolor portion of this project. So I would suggest getting a couple different size brushes if you have them. And with um, watercolor brushes, you always want to use, I don't see the water on your brush, on your paint, but you always want to use um, super soft bristles. So if you have a hard bristle brush, don't use that. Just try to find your soft ones that you might have. Um, and then I like to do it in different sections. So the first thing I do is I try to just get one area wet only. So like for this one, I'm just going to get just the sky wet. I'm going to get the whole sky wet that I want to put water on and I'm going to be still watching for my outline so I'm not getting any water where the rocks are or where the um, house is or any of that stuff just the areas around it that's all I'm getting wet and if you have tape you can tape your watercolor paper to your uh, surface but I did not do that because I didn't think you guys had tape but if you have tape it's best to tape like blue tape um, painter's tape it's best to tape it to your surface so if you have it great I'll show you that in another video if not just do what I'm doing, which is just paint. It'll just change the texture of your painting as in it'll warp it or not. But like I said, this will be really cool for you guys to use salt water in your water. So I would suggest that if you have it straight from the ocean. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna do is this painting is super, 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 super light um, with the color of the sky. So I'm literally, and also I might've gone too low on here. I guess the horizon line is a little higher, but so I'm just gonna kind of go like this. And you can barely see that blue that I'm using and that is 100% on purpose. It's super light. So I'm going to spread out as much as I can. And I'm going the same way that the clouds are in my picture. The clouds are going like sideways, like back and forth. So that's how I'm going to make the sky. I'm not going to make it go up and down because that's the way that the actual clouds are looking. So you want them to go follow that same direction. That's how we're going to get it to look more realistic. And you can get pretty close to the thing. So you just try not to go on the actual lighthouse if possible. So if you need a smaller brush, great. But obviously a bigger brush for a bigger portion of your painting makes more sense. If you're trying to do a little detailed spot, you're going to want to use a little tiny brush. If you're doing a big spot, you're going to want to use a big brush. That's just smart with your timing. It's a lot quicker to fill this in if I'm using a big brush. Those chimneys are going to be red and they're not going to show up. Um, the blue is not going to show up on them. So I'm going to get them. They can get a little bit wet with this light blue color and it will be fine. So not like that would be too dark, right? So I've got to spread that out, move it around. And you notice that because I didn't get the lighthouse wet, see how it's not going onto the lighthouse? So I never got that part wet. So it's totally fine. It's not going to even go over there. The uh, paint only goes where the water is. So we can just move that right out of there. I mean, I can scoop it up. If you ever like put too much down, you can rinse out your brush, just get it wet, squeeze out the extra, and then you have kind of like almost a damp dry brush and you can like suck it up like a little vacuum. That's what I do. So get that out of there so now it's almost like even and then you just kind of jump over so if I have it on this side I'm going to put it on this side if I have it on that side I'm going to scoop it over to that side that way it's kind of even in the sky like the clouds wouldn't just stop at the lighthouse you know okay so that is my sky portion now the next thing I want to do is I want to let that dry if I just started to do the water here for the ocean it would bleed together and like kind of go together so I don't want to do that I want to skip and find a spot on my paper where there's not already water so for me that's going to be these little rocks and because my rocks are smaller, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. I'm gonna do a basic layer with um, my big brush. You can make like grays or tans. I'm just gonna kind of get this area kind of wet. And we're trying to pick really realistic colors. So even though it's fun to do like bright neon colors, we're trying to do for this one, we wanna kind of keep it realistic with what we were seeing in real life. So you're gonna pick pretty muted tones because the fog makes everything super like uh, dull. So we're gonna to wanna to pick dull colors. So just a lot more water for your brushes. And we're just gonna move it around. And this one, I don't have to make it as smooth because we could like dab it because our rocks are gonna be like jaggedy. That's not exactly nice to do to our watercolor brushes. So I'm not gonna do a lot of that, but if you were to do it, it wouldn't be a problem. 
you don't have to be so strict about going back and forth side to side because these rocks are gonna going like up and down. So also if there's other areas that are like lighter or darker, that's okay too. And my brush is like leaving little hairs in my painting. That's really annoying me. So if that happens to you, just try to pause and like scoop them out. Sometimes you can do it with um, your nail, but if you rip your paper, that's annoying. So I would just suggest using like the back of a brush or back of your paintbrush or um, sometimes your pencil can get in there. Cause if you kind of go over it, like I scratched my paper a little bit, so that's annoying, but that's fine. It's gonna be hidden in the rocks anyway. So you can still see what's going on here. Um, and then these rocks do kind of carry over this way onto this beach area. It's a little bit different color, but I'm just gonna fill that in just so we have it all a super light layer. So this is the first layer of our watercolor painting and we can go back in and add as many layers until we get the detail we want each time. So the next thing I'm gonna do, remember I'm jumping around, I'm painting from um, back to front or like big to small, but I always start by reserving the space with my outline so that I can go back in and paint it. So basically if I, in a regular painting, if I had done the background first, I'd start with background and then midground and then foreground, which is like the sky and then the building and then this, but because I saved space for myself, I'm able to jump around. With watercolor, sometimes you have to paint the thing in the front first because you can't overlap it like you can with acrylic painting. So we're jumping around. So the next thing I'm gonna do is the roofs and then the water. So I'm gonna stagger. The roofs are not touching anything anymore. They might be still touching up here, but this part should be dry by now. So we're constantly jumping back and forth between what's already dry. So if you wanna take a break, you could do this one day and then come back to it the next day. And that would be another good option. For this portion, I am just doing the roofs. I am using the flat edge of my thick brush to fill in these spaces as easily as I can using the edges of the brush to get a hard edge on the roof so that it doesn't like blend with the sky. But remember, I jumped around, so the sky is totally dry when I'm working on this section. Um, and then this area is not touching the rocks, so everything is separate and there's no overlap. And then the next thing is I kind of wait for the roof to dry and then I add in the green trim that my picture has. Um, and I'm going back in and I'm slowly using my tiny, tiny brush to get the windows and all of the details onto my piece. Make sure that you're just pushing super lightly. And also for the gray area, I just mixed as light, light, light color as I could to get that gray. For the bushes, I'm just dabbing rocks. I'm kind of stroking and instead of just poking it, I'm kind of like dipping and draw, dip, draw down, dip, draw down on each little rock. Then for the water, I am just blending two or three different colors to get them to overlap so that it looks like the water and the waves mixing. And then I can go back in and add more of those rocks and flowers later. The end.